I am Aquaman. Hi everyone, and welcome to another marvelous video. When it comes to superhuman beings in the world of comics, a proper anatomical description is mandatory. It's not just how miraculously bullets bounce back upon hitting their bodies, but also why. While we're all aware of the anatomical magnificence of most DC characters, today it's time for none other than Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman. It would be oversimplifying to conclude that Aquaman is strong or brave as the character holds some unique capabilities. Being born to a human and an Atlantean, Arthur emerged to be mightier than even pure blood Atlanteans. Is it a magical combination of human Atlantean DNA or just a coincidence? Join us till the end of the video and explore the unique anatomy of Aquaman. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. That is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. One true king. Who is Aquaman? Is he really a half Atlantean or has his father mutated him? The character of Aquaman was originally created by Paul Norris and Mort Weisinger. He was introduced in More Fun Comics issue 73, published on September 19th of 1941. When an unarmed ship carrying hospital workers and refugees was under the attack of a submarine U-112, Aquaman made his entry and saved them. After bringing them to the nearest land, he was asked about his miraculous powers, and that was when he explained his origins. His father was a famous underwater explorer. One day, he found an ancient city underwater and built himself a watertight home. He lived there and spent his time learning as much as he could about the city's ancient history. Aquaman's mother died when he was born following which his father experimented on him to survive underwater and acquire superhuman speed, reflexes, and strength. The origin stories of Aquaman was later changed, making him half Atlantean, and this alliteration was designated to be from Earth 2. Interesting, in New Earth, that is, the reality of the DC multiverse between 1986 and 2011, they introduced Arthur Joseph Curry, the second Aquaman with a similar origin story. The character was created by Kurt Busiek and Jackson Geis and introduced in May of 2006, Aquaman, Sword of Atlantis, Issue 40. Arthur Joseph Curry was a son of Philip Curry and Elaine Curry. Philip was Thomas Curry's nephew and a marine biologist. When young Arthur was born prematurely on Avalon Cape during a storm, his mother died in order to save his son. He gave him Anton Geis's serum that could develop gills in humans. Arthur survived and later spent his youth in a tank detached from the outside world. After the disappearance of the original Aquaman, after the events of the Infinite Crisis, a monster from the oceans who called himself the Dweller in the Depths telepathically contacted Arthur Joseph, believing him to be the real Aquaman. Arthur Joseph Curry eventually took the mantle of Aquaman and remained until Blackest Night when Arthur Curry returned and resumed his role. Moving on to the more popular origin story of Aquaman, young Arthur was born to Atlantean royal Atlanta and human Thomas Curry. Thomas was the lighthouse keeper of Amnesty Bay, and one day, when he was caught up in a ravaging storm, he was saved by a wandering Atlanta. The two fell in love, and Atlanta gave birth to Arthur Curry. They had a brief, happy life as Atlanta could not reveal her family to her enemies from Atlantis. She returned, leaving Thomas to raise his son alone. Thomas took Arthur to all the different corners of the world so he could learn the most about life on land. When Arthur began showcasing the powers that he inherited from Atlanta, Thomas requested marine scientist Dr. Stephen Shin, whom Thomas had saved from dying in a shipwreck, to educate his son about the Marines. Eventually, Stephen began a growing obsessed with Arthur's heritage and wanted to reveal Arthur to the world. However, when he asked Thomas about the same, it turned their relationship sour. Thomas not only denied but also sabotaged all documents and data pertaining to Arthur. Unable to back up his claims in public, Stephen's revelation to the public turned into a joke. He contacted Black Manta to get a blood sample of Arthur, who instead tried killing him. 
Thomas defended his son, which eventually led him dying of cardiac arrest. In his last words, he asked Arthur to find his mother and tell her that he loved her. On Atlantis, Alana faked her own death, which made Volko question whether her son Orm was the cause. In response, Orm banished Volko, who then found Arthur and took him to Atlantis. Orm peacefully stepped down from the throne from Arthur to become the king of Atlantis. Can he regenerate his body part using water? Regenerating body parts after getting severed has not been one of Aquaman's prominent powers. However, there has been one instance where New Earth Arthur Curry was able to regenerate his severed hand using water. In 1994, Aquaman's Volume 5, Issue 1, writer Peter David introduced a new villain named Charybdis who had the ability to take over the powers of others. During his confrontation with Aquaman in Issue 2, he took over his powers of communicating with aquatic life. He then forced Arthur's hand into the water, teaming up with the piranhas to tear it apart. Initially, it was replaced with a harpoon and later a robotic one until the Aquaman Volume 6 Issue 1. In this issue, Aquaman met Lady of the Lake in the Secret Sea who bestowed upon him a hand made of magical waters. Can he turn his entire body into water? In 2002's Obsidian Age, stretching across JLA issue 68 to issue 75, Aquaman was completely transformed into a godlike being entirely made of water. It all occurred during the arrival of Empriex. His advanced forces kept sweeping the big guns of the Justice League of America one after the other, and even Aquaman had to face one of the probes. He fought fearlessly, battling it over Posidonis. Soon, an explosion took place which cleared the waters. Suddenly, there was no Atlantis, leaving a great rift in the ocean. Soon, Atlantis was found on the ocean's surface, which made the League members conclude that it was sent into the past. With a spell from the Tempest, the Justice League was sent to the past, leaving Nightwing to lead a backup Justice League. The original Justice League traveled 3,000 years backward and found Aquaman enslaved and the city ruled by the League of the Asians. The future Atlanteans were also imprisoned for 15 years and it was all done by the leader of the League of Asians, Gamine. He had trapped Aquaman's consciousness inside a pool and Aquaman could be seen completely made out of water. Zatanna used her powers to free Arthur, making him a living body of water and gaining immense powers. He was called the Water Wraith and his powers of hydrokinesis were divine. Using his capabilities, Aquaman destroyed Gamine's works and sunk Atlantis back into the ocean, like the way it always was. Zoltana's magic, however, had one drawback. It changed the Aquaman's personality slightly, which eventually drove him to be ruthless. Later, when history was saved, Aquaman was put on trial for treason. The League members intervened to save him, but Aquaman chose to accept his fate. As mentioned before, New Earth's version of Aquaman briefly disappeared during the events of Brightest Day. Aquaman and Mera united, and while they struggled against Mera's twin sister, Siren, and her dead squad, the entity arrived and transformed Aquaman into a water elemental. Aquaman's physical shape transformed completely into water and it was the second time we saw Aquaman's entire body transformed into water. He, along with Firestorm, the Fire Elemental, Hawkman, and Hawk Girl, who were the Wind Elemental, and Martian Manhunter as the Earth Elemental, were teamed up by the Entity to protect humanity from the Dark Avatar. The Dark Avatar was a corrupted Swamp Thing whose connection to the Green had been tainted by Necron. Can anything break Aquaman's skin? Exploring the superhero's impressive toughness, it is imperative to understand that surviving or even reaching the ocean bottom exposes tremendous amounts of water pressure. All thanks to modern-day suits and equipment, humans can reach the depths of the ocean for research and study. Otherwise, the pressure in the depths would easily crush a human being. On the other hand, 
Aquaman can be seen traveling as deep as the Mariana Trench, which roughly has a water pressure of 1,086 bars. Thus, it is evident that Aquaman's skin is far tougher than that of any human being. Apart from depths, he has been shown to withstand or counter catastrophic blows. In one instant, he casually shrugged off a punch from Wonder Woman. Thus, it can be concluded that Aquaman's skin is not ordinary and extremely durable. Does he have superhuman hearing ability like Superman? Aquaman's hearing abilities are not as strong as Superman, but they are way above those of any being on the planet. When it comes to hearing underwater, the speed of sound increases and helps Aquaman hear sounds from miles away. It is all natural for him to converse underwater, which includes clarity and listening, and as we know how gibberish and noisy it is underwater. Aquaman has a physical ability to overcome them. Aquaman can also use echolocation, which is usually done by whales. Echolocation is a process in which one sends sound, and based on the time taken for the echo, they access distances and obstacles before them. Whales possess this ability, but it also exposes them to a lot of noise. They have protection for their ears, but in the case of Aquaman, there is none. Thus, his ears are durable to voice and yet grant him the ability to echolocate. With your presence, stop! He can communicate with sea creatures. The capability of interacting with marine organisms might not be an asset for land dwellers, but for Aquaman, it has been a game-changing aspect for him. It has been useful during battles and on numerous occasions where he got the help of sea creatures. Aquaman's ability to converse with sea creatures has been the center of all memes and jokes. It is mainly because marine creatures have developed brains that could engage them in any conversation. During the initial days of characters, he could be seen talking to fishes in their own language. It was later modified into a more telepathic connection with the creatures using which he interacted with them. However, following New 52, this ability was thoroughly modified and it stated that Aquaman could never communicate with fishes but gave them mental suggestions to execute tasks. He can control water. The ability to control water or hypokinesis has been something associated with the Zabel, which was eventually passed on to Mera. However, Aquaman also showcased his ability to manipulate water on numerous occasions. In various storylines and events, Aquaman has shown his ability to create tsunamis, stop water currents, and create tidal waves. He could also control the weather to a certain extent. How fast can Aquaman swim? Diving into the speed of the king of the seas. There are many marine creatures that are considered extremely fast underwater, and Aquaman is considered to be one of the fastest of all. His speed is tremendous. He will not be able to outrun Superman or the Flash on land, but he can be a quite a challenge underwater. He is stated to be able to cross 150 miles an hour in water, but on numerous occasions, it's been far more than that. In 2012, Aquaman issue 11, he outran a water jet that could go hypersonic. In another instance, Aquaman clocked a speed of Mach 20, which is more than that of an aircraft. Can Aquaman see beyond the surface? Exploring the depths of his enhanced vision. Underwater vision is often blurry and even worse in plankton-infested areas. This is all considered during daylight, but at night, the ocean is like a dark void. With all that said, Aquaman has pinpoint vision and accuracy underwater even at night. His eyes could scan 3,600 feet below the ocean's surface and could see 36,000 feet through the water. This might just conclude that Aquaman's vision is one of the best there is. He can summon undead sea life. Following the reality of the new Earth, when Aquaman returned during the events of the brightest day and reunited with Mera, he noticed that he retained his Black Lantern ability to summon and control undead sea life. Aquaman was resurrected for a purpose, and that was to save Aqualad and also to prevent a war between Atlantis and Zebel. During this period, Aquaman showcased this ability for his aid in battle. Does he have flying ability? 
Water and air are both considered fluids and show numerous similar procedures. For example, the method of heat transfer in fluids is convection and both air and water exhibit it. Navigating through air and water is also similar, except for their contrasting densities. If the density of water and air were the same, a fish could have also flown. Aquaman has been shown navigating through the waters innumerable times, but that certainly doesn't mean he won't be able to fly. Aquaman has showcased his ability to leap through great distances on both land and sea. In the initial days of Clark gaining his powers, he could also jump across tall buildings before converting into a complete flight. Aquaman could have done the same if he had not spent most of his time in water. In 1969, Aquaman issue 46, he was shown to be hovering in the air along with Wonder Woman. Does he have magical ability? Although Aquaman possessed several magical abilities, he wouldn't be placed on the list of magicians or sorcerers. However, owing to his royal Atlantean heritage, Aquaman does have a few magical abilities. Wielding Poseidon's trident shows that he is special and holds mystical ability. With Poseidon's trident, he could summon lightning and rain and even control the winds. Sorry, Pops. My bad. Oh, yeah. This is my son. Does he have a half Atlantean kid? Showcased in Aquaman issue 23, published in October of 1965, Arthur Curry had a son with Mera, whom they named Arthur Curry Jr. It was a part of the New Earth reality. Unfortunately, the child was suffocated to death by Black Manta, which also became the cause of the separation between Aquaman and his wife Mera. In the reality of Prime Earth, Aquaman and Mera had a daughter whom they named Andrina Andy Curry. She was introduced in 2020's Aquaman Volume 8, Issue 57. Arthur and Mera could not stay together owing it to the political unrest. So when Mera suddenly told Arthur about being pregnant, he panicked and planned to leave in order to process the news. This infuriated Mera and he killed him in a fit of rage. Following Arthur's adventure with the ancient sea gods, he was resurrected and he settled in Amnesty Bay. Black Manta lured Mera to come to the surface by destroying ancient Atlantean relics and battled her. Manta attacked her with his Mecha Manta, which Mera eventually destroyed, but the fight led her to a state of coma. She was rushed to the Atlantean medical help where she gave birth to Andrina. Arthur took her to the surface and raised her. At night, they often made visits to Atlantis to meet Kamatos Mera. Later, when Volko announced his marriage with Mera, Orm used the opportunity to kidnap Andrina and create a dispute between Aquaman and Volko. However, on land, Aquaman, Tula, and Aqualad managed to use the remaining parts of Mecha Manta and track down Andrina and save her. After Mera recovered, she reunited with her parents on Amnesty Bay. Is he immortal? Aquaman is not immortal, as we have seen him die on a few occasions, most notably during Flashpoint. However, he has been resurrected several times as well. At some point, his life was taken by Narwhal, following which we saw Arthur Joseph Curry taking over the mantle of Aquaman. Later during the events of The Blackest Night, he was resurrected into an undead zombie with the intention of erasing all life from the world. Later, in Brightest Day, he was brought back to life by White Lantern Entity, following which he reunited with Mera and resumed his role as Aquaman. As mentioned, he was once killed by Mera, but only to be resurrected by the ancient sea gods. Thus, it can be inferred that Aquaman's fate and the ancient forces managed to evade his death, making him quasi-immortal. Marvelous verdict. So, we have finally come to the end of the video, and we hope you have liked our content. Aquaman might not be as strong as Superman, but he is surely not someone who could be dealt with easily. He is backed up by ancient deities and his royal heritage, which makes him one of the big guns of the Justice League. With that, we will be concluding today's video. Thank you for watching till the end, and stay tuned for the next marvelous video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.